come out here and you just come around that corner and you see these cliffs and the seabirds here, you know, it just hits you. You have to stop and think, you know, this is amazing and I live in the middle of it. Would you ever consider living anywhere else? Not now. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Thanks for your offer. <laughs> Rathlin is a pretty wild place. Nothing between you and Newfoundland to the west. The elements really get at you here. It is pretty untamed. There's an abundance of all sorts of wildlife. We've got the unique golden hair, which is really, really bright yellow with blue eyes and unique to Rathlin, actually. And then you go to the coastline, you've got the, the seals that haul out in various places. There's some of them haul out quite close to the harbour. But the marine environment out there is just amazing because once you go out like a quarter mile off the shore here, you get another set of cliffs, underwater cliffs, the same as the cliffs we have here and they drop down into great depths, out in two different, three different layers going down. So if you've got the tide coming in from the west, the flood tide, it's hitting into those underwater cliffs. It's just bringing all the nutrient back to the surface and then you get the planktons feeding in that. And this is why it's a haven for the seabirds because it's, there's so much food supply just right on the doorstep. We've got the guillemots and they like to nest in all the flat areas and big ledges. They're very sociable and all pack in together. And then we've got the razorbills. Now their numbers would be about 22,500, which is actually internationally important numbers. One of the biggest razorbill colonies in Europe. Then we've got two grey and white species that are very similar to each other. You've got the small gull, which is a kittiwick and they build a grass nest built on the little outcrops of rock there and they, they have grass and mud and seaweed and all sorts of things in there. They build it all up and then it sort of bakes in spring sunshine. They're quite a pretty little gull with a very bright lemon coloured beak and black tips and the ends of their wings and make a lot of noise as you can hear. Then the other grey and white one is the fulmer, fulmer petrel, so it'll be It'll be a relation of an albatross. And it's got this very strange beak shape where it's got these tubes on the top of its nose. And these are glands where it can excrete salt from its body. The star of the show very often is the puffin. Everybody wants to see the puffin. They're very colourful beaks and uh, lovely little black and white tunics on them and the massive orange feet but it can be a disadvantage to them sometimes when you see them walking through the long grass down there because their nails and feet get tangled in the grass and they fall over and they jump up again and sort of shake themselves and think, oh, I hope nobody saw that kind of look about them. So that's why people love them as well as they're colourful, but they're also entertaining. These birds are indicators of the health of the sea, if you like. You know, if they're doing well, everything must be pretty good out there. If they start to not do so well, then you need to think what's going on out there because they are ocean birds. They only come into the land to breed and then they've gone back out to sea and they stay in the ocean for the rest of the year. So what happens in the ocean affects them big time. So while it's really important to note that there's lots of wildlife here, sadly it is under threat. Sadly we have seen our seabird populations continuing to decline and much of our marine wildlife and wildlife in general is, is impacted by the global climate and biodiversity crisis. Increasing sea temperatures can be really hard on, on, uh, on seabirds. Things like guillemots 
having to go further offshore to find food because their food is moving away from the warmer temperatures. Maybe the food that they're getting isn't as good quality as it has been in the past, or maybe they're interacting with anthropogenic pressures, that's pressures from mankind. Um, maybe there are fisheries pressures on, on birds or maybe getting entangled in gear. There's a whole host of, of sadly issues that could be impacting uh, on our wildlife here and here on Rathlin. We need to be able to protect what's here, but also give it space to grow so that populations can recover. It's very difficult to change some of these bigger things and you know, part of the research we do and it might seem like insignificant little counts on little patches of the colony but when you add it all up and other guys in other colonies doing the same thing we're getting an idea of what's happening and if it's anything to do with say food supply well then at a higher level and policy making levels all those things can feed into it so you have to reassure yourself when you're sitting on a cliff top freezing counting birds you know what's this all about there is a, a reason behind it so my hope for the future for Rathlin is that it remains the wild island that it is. It's a remote and unique place, but yet it's still so accessible. It's only half an hour on the ferry to get here, and yet you're part of a unique habitat, a refuge for wildlife. But I'd also like future generations to be able to come here to see the seabirds, to see the seabird cliffs, to smell the seabirds, and see a healthy, thriving marine environment. I think that we have the power to be able to put protection in place that will maintain the, the wonderful wildlife we have here for future generations. You get maybe a bit blasé when you live in a place like this and it's only maybe when you go to the mainland and go somewhere else you're always kind of like there's something missing you're searching for something and you realize it's what you have at home it never ceases to inspire you you know and there's always something new and different happening you're always looking out for something new whether it be a migrant bird coming in or a whatever you know we were driving down the road there the other day and there was one of these golden hairs just sitting by the side of the road you thought it'll only happen in Rathlin. Mm -hmm.